Cedric, I'm rolling. Okay. Did you ever feel that you were making um, a difference for the community when you won in New York? Back then, no, we didn't understand mm-hmm. that kind of stuff or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, yes, I can see where if I had kids your age or younger, you can teach those kids those issues and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, kids, I don't know where their minds are at sometimes. And mm-hmm. that's not all kids, but some kids, you know, it starts in the home for uh, raising your child, teaching your child the black history, you know, um, the importance of a community, give back to your community, you know, things like that. Because I went away to school. I went to Tennessee State. Uh, there was a black coach, Butler, I remember his last name was Butler. He was a basketball uh, coach at Urbana High School. And he, I don't know if that was the first year he did that, but he took several black students down south to visit black colleges. Mm-hmm. Other black colleges, I remember the one that I chose was Tennessee State, and that's the one I went to. And I fell in love with it. It was all black school, be away from home, and I had nobody tell me do nothing. Mm-hmm. So I chose that school. I came back home told my mom, if I can go to this school down here, I ain't going out. I had an older brother. He went to the U of I, but he dropped out, and he was going to be a lawyer. So he dropped out. So I told my parents, I'm not going here. And she, I've lived here all my life. I'm 18. I want to go away. Well, my parents really didn't have the money or whatnot, so I found out how to get money, went to the bank, Bank of Illinois, that used to be on Church Street in Champaign, got a loan, went, uh, got accepted into uh, Tennessee State, and went there for four years. But prior to that, I was in high school every year. And I went to summer school every year. So I knew I had my credits and should have came out the year before. But the school argued that I did not have enough credits. So I went to sign up for my senior year. That's when they realized I can't go to school. Mm-hmm. I'm done with high school because I've got all my credits and over. So I couldn't get into a college. So I went to Parkland College that was located down downtown Champaign in various buildings. The building on... Randolph, right there at the corner. You know where the Springer building's at? Mm-hmm. Right across the street from that, that used to be Parkland. Uh-huh. That used to be Parkland. Mm-hmm. Then they had classes, room downtown, and other buildings. So that's where I went for the first year. And I took the oh, the, the the lower level college courses, you know, entry level uh, classes. And did real good, made the honor roll and everything. Then that following year, I transferred to Tennessee State. Because mm-hmm. I, I mean, what was I going to do? I couldn't go back to high school. They wouldn't let me in there because I had too many credits. And I, you know, I, I told you guys I had enough credits. So it was the school fault, but mm-hmm. I had to wait another year. So that was fine. So I transferred to Tennessee State to an all black school. And when I got there, that was fabulous. It was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. And when I got to Tennessee State, um, I stayed with a girlfriend so I could check into the dorm. dorm. My parents took me. Being on campus, this is the first time I ever experienced there was black a black man had long hair, and he was gay. But I didn't know anything really about gay people because I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about it, listen about it here in Champaign, Urbana. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at this, this black dude, hair, this is nice, perm. I'm like, oh, my mm-hmm. God, what in the world is this? But, you know, you accept it, you know, and mm-hmm. the gay gay people down there, at least the black, because they had a, a large population on campus. They had a large population on campus. Never never known anything about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but they were friendly. They were nice. They were smart. A lot of them were in music. And things like that. Um, never ran into a roast before in my life. Seen a fly roast when I went to campus. Stayed in the dormitory. Never seen a roast before. Didn't know what it was. I'm like, what in the world are these things? Mm-hmm. So I'm scared of bugs. So, mm-hmm. But going to an all-black school, I tell anybody, any kid, when you get out of school, graduate, go out of town to college. They will learn how to grow up and be independent. Mm-hmm. My first semester, I party. Party hard, because I never, you know, hey, I'm free, don't have to do mm-hmm. that. Going to the uh, campus party, the, uh, Omegas, the sororities, hanging out, you know, just just, just living life. Mm-hmm. When I got my grades, I said, oh my, mm-hmm. I changed it around, because I'm paying for my school. Mm-hmm. So it took that first semester, at least it took me, at least I was able to realize this is not what school is about. You know, you can have fun and do all like that, but you still got to do your study. And I graduated with, uh, in 76 with a bachelor's in social science. So from there, I've been doing social work ever since mm-hmm. then for 34 years, and I love it to death. Mm-hmm. So uh, I did my internship at uh, the DCFS office for a whole year without any pay, eight hours a day. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how I got around. I had five cases. I don't, to this day, still don't know how I got around. Mm-hmm. Went to school with Oprah Renfrey. Uh, I have her in a photo book, but I don't know Oprah. My girlfriends knew her. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know how come I didn't know her, but <laughs> I did. I wish I had known her back then. Mm-hmm. But I don't. That my girlfriends do. They say, "Damn, you do." I said, "I don't remember her at all." Mm-hmm. And uh, we used to thumb back then. We didn't have cars. Mm-hmm. We used to thumb mm-hmm. to get to the store, 
go see Al Green downtown. We thumb, we hitch type. Mm-hmm. So nowadays, no thumbing. Mm-hmm. But back then, it was okay. It was safe. Mm-hmm. So, so you never talked to Oprah. I don't recall. I don't recall. <laughs> I have a picture with her in a yearbook, but I don't recall. To this day, I don't recall. But my mm-hmm. girlfriend remember her quite well. Yeah. And we, it was 10 of us who hung together. We would go mm-hmm. in sets, you know, like two or three if we go to the store because it was more than one person to be together, you know, if we go get groceries mm-hmm. and whatnot. So, but no, I don't know <laughs> Oprah. I wish I had a known <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> yeah. What was the style like back then? Platform shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the blue jean. I always wore like my belt, my shoes. They had the Mac. Nails had the Mac. Purse had the Mac. So something like that. Mm-hmm. And as I got older, and after I had kids, that didn't matter, you know. Mm-hmm. As long as you were dressed appropriately or whatnot. But in high school, you know, it was a, a high school and college. It was a thing competition, you know. Trying to look nice, be up front. Because I remember on campus wearing heels to school. Now these kids don't wear heels to school. But back then, we did. Mm-hmm. We dressed up, you know. Dressed those jeans up or whatever. Mm-hmm. So. Um, what was hairstyles like? I had mine pressed and curled mm-hmm. because I couldn't get an afro. Mm-hmm. But afros were back then, uh, big afros with men and women. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't ever recall having an afro. Mm-hmm. And then because I have such a large forehead, so I always wore my hair with my bang, bangs in front of my forehead. Mm-hmm. So big earrings. Uh, they had the clear plastic belt. They've come back. All that kind of stuff. What mm-hmm. used to be has come back now. I mean, I got on platform shoes now. They got the clogs were in, you know, the wedges. Um, most Yeah, we wore mostly jeans. Mm-hmm. Pretty much in the choir at school or whatnot, you know. Was that through all years of school or? Pretty much so. Mm-hmm. Pretty much so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever um, feel that you were making... Um, back to the drill team, um, that you were making an impact on the black community, if so. No, we just, at that mm-hmm. time, no, as a child thinking about it, no. No, mm-hmm. it was just something to do, it was something fun, and the competition, you know, we didn't have anybody else in town that you can compete about, but we would go places and just perform mm-hmm. until we went to New York and we had to compete in one first place. And that was a big thing, coming from a little small town, winning a big state, you know, that mm-hmm. was something big. Mm-hmm. So, was, I really want to hear about styles for some reason. Um, I don't know how else to tell you about styles. <laughs> um, we look like little homely looking kids when you look at some of the pictures now. You know, mm-hmm. when I showed you in there, we mm-hmm. just look, to me, we look homely looking. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had the mini skirts, the short skirts were in the short, the hot pants. That was mm-hmm. a thing. And I always try to keep up with the style or whatnot, so. Mm-hmm. It was just basic to me. I mean, all those mm-hmm. styles have come now back in a little mm-hmm. form, a little bit different. They still have shorts or whatnot. The shorts nowadays are, are micro uh, shorts, not hot pants. They're micro shorts, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dresses, some you still wear short, still wear long or whatnot. But, you know, we tried, it, people just try to keep up with the fashion and whatnot. And then mm-hmm. uh, we would, friends, you know, we would share our clothing, you know, wear somebody, wear this or wear that, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Like girlfriends or whatever. And same thing in college or whatnot, so. Mm-hmm. How, um, how was, how was the town? Like, the way it looked, Champaign, Illinois. Did it still look the same with all the buildings and things? Oh, no, Champaign has grown, oh, tremendously. I mean, you used to have Birch Village, you used to have Lakeside Terrace. Mm-hmm. Lakeside Terrace used to be all white, stayed in there before they started letting blacks move in there. It used to be all whites, and then blacks stayed on here. So you see the segregation from the town, from Champaign to Urbana, and on what side of the town it was. Um, Douglas Center has been, been real rebuilt. If mm-hmm. you could see a picture of what the center used to look like compared to what it is now, this is this is heaven for what mm-hmm. it used to be like. So, but mm-hmm. we used to skate up in there. I mean, it, you go around them curves, and some of it would be up, whatnot. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know how to skate, you're gonna get crushed on or whatnot. <laughs> so. And back then, I think curfews played a big factor, you know, parents mm-hmm. knowing where kids are at, not fighting, not acting crazy, kids not getting arrested, you know, there wasn't, mm-hmm. there was, there were drugs, but, and then there were gangs. So mm-hmm. that controlled a lot of the black population on, on the North End, is what they call the North End. Mm-hmm. The gangs were real bad back then. Uh, they would burn things up. I remember before we moved in Dr. Ella subdivision, uh, they had burnt one or two of the houses down that they were building up, you know, in the process of building. So 
they had the police had a lot to do with gangs here in this town. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how was um, so Champagne was segregated? It wasn't set to a certain extent. It was mm-hmm. all all of Bradley Street was all white, nothing mm-hmm. but white. I remember that whites, nice yards, flowers and stuff. And then I think when one or two blacks would move into the neighborhood, then white people started moving out. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was segregated back then. But mm-hmm. back then, you never, you know, we were kids, we didn't think anything about it. Um, going to school, I don't remember kids calling that, you know. Mm-hmm. At least the kids didn't, you know. And like at Washington School, it was mostly black kids because it was for the kids in the community. Now, Washington School is segregated, you know. They bring kids from the other side of town over here. But I think the schools in the black neighborhoods need to maintain, make sure the kids that live in the neighborhood go to those schools and not bust them across town. Mm -hmm. All the schools should be equal what they provide to kids in any school. Yeah. So. Um, How was, um, so it wasn't like racism, really, in a way. We, I can't say that I remember any of that. Mm Mm-hmm. You know. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't remember people calling kids names. I just don't remember that at all. Mm-hmm. Hmm. How was elementary school? That was vague. I don't. Mm-hmm. I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember getting in trouble a lot of times in grade mm-hmm. school. I was always getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. I had to go to the office, get a paddle. They used mm-hmm. to paddle you back then. Mm-hmm. So, was there a junior high? Or? No. Yeah, junior high, high. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Junior mm-hmm. high and high school. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Because back, the, yeah, the junior high school in Urbana, Mr. Mears, I remember him being a principal at one time or assistant principal. Mrs. Beckham was the secretary. And then there was the high school. Mr. Thompson used to be over the high school. And then they've had other principals and whatnot. Yeah, so mm-hmm. they didn't have a junior high school. So how is it different today than um, back in 1968? Oh, God. You what, school? Mm-hmm. Um, schools in general. School in general, really the town, maybe. The town has grown. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a lot of blacks have grown, got, you know, uh, have small businesses or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of blacks that grew up here have left here but don't come back. And uh, I never have a thing about saying when I got got out of college, I would never come back to Champaign and Banner. I came back mainly because of the fact I graduated and also I was pregnant graduating with my, and from college. So, I called my parents that year of 76, saying, you're going to get two gifts. I'm graduating for number one. Number two, you're going to be grandparents. So, And I wanted to come back home with the baby for my parents, and I'm glad I did because then my dad died shortly after that, after having my old, oldest daughter. Um, the town, I mean, the campus has grown. Mm-hmm. Back then, we used to go, in high school, we used to go to the union. They used to have dances. So that was a big thing to go on campus, go to the dances. Okay, mm-hmm. I can't say that, but couldn't wait to go to the campus. And... Um, the town itself is, got, I mean, the, you got the mall. You used to have downtown Champaign on Neal Street. You used to have the popcorn stand out there, Joseph Kuhn, Kresge's, Grant's. I used to go downtown shopping with my aunt every Saturday because she went every Saturday. We would go to J.W. Fields. was an exclusive store. And when you go in that store, you had to have money to go in the store. So being black to go in there and for my aunt to go in there to buy stuff from mm-hmm. there, from Joseph Kuhn's, it was an up, upscale place. Robeson's was upscale. I remember when I got my first credit card at Robeson's. I went there and spent the whole money up mm-hmm. one time. But, you know, things have really grown. The town itself has really grown. So mm-hmm. and I think the schools are not like they, they used to be. If I'm glad I didn't go in. And I don't think I ever just thought I wanted to be a teacher. But if I was a teacher to this day, there would be some changes in, in high school mm-hmm. and grade school. Because I, the, I'm a caseworker. So I've gone to school with one of my parents. And I see these kids, mainly the boys and the girls, the pants the way they drop, they holding the pants up. You you gotta go to school to get education. Kids gotta mm-hmm. realize education is very important. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that, you're not gonna be anywhere. Yeah. You're not gonna be anywhere. And so many kids just play it all. I mean you got the girls competing against each other. The peer the peer pressure nowadays is horrible for kids. It's just horrible. But I think a lot of us not being the kids aren't being parented or taught because mm-hmm. parents are out there doing their thing, kids are doing their thing. And kids having babies, it's just, I mean. Mm-hmm. And back then when someone had, I remember in high school when someone had a baby. You didn't go, they didn't allow you to go to school. Mm-hmm. They did not allow you to go to school. You had to be homeschooled. You could not come to school. Mm-hmm. So nowadays you can be pregnant, have two kids at home, be pregnant, and still be in school. Mm-hmm. Which is okay, 
but you know the course of action is you don't keep having kids you mm-hmm. know by or not be pregnant in the first place. right yeah mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah, schools have really, really changed. And then you got the laws nowadays. You know, if you hit a kid, you know, you got DCFS looking at your face. Or, you know, uh, teachers can't discipline kids. But something's got to be reached out with these kids in the future because, it's get, to me, I don't see it getting any better. It's just getting worse. Mm-hmm. Did you're you? so quiet. And I see you all the time when you be standing out at the corner. I mean, he's, you're so quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you ever go through any bullying? No. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-mm. Was do you know any friends that went through it, or was it um, like how it is today? I only thing I can say is like when we were in high school, when the black boys would go with the white girls, mm-hmm. black girls would get mad about that. Mm-hmm. So, and that was rare, but it was becoming a, a thing in our time or era that black boys would go with the white girls. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, we would, we would get mad about that. Mm-hmm. Was it vice versa with um, white boys and black girls? Nope. Mm-mm. More mm-hmm. so with black men mm. at the time when we were in high school or whatnot. So. Mm-hmm. What were um, some things back then that were like, um, you know, like when you look at things today um, that were hip or, you know, the fad back then? What was hip? Give me an example. Like any certain, um, maybe person or um, maybe a type of person or like something that, a car maybe? I don't know about cars, mm-hmm. so I couldn't say anything about a car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what kind of I got because it got the name on it. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm just like with music. I'm mm-hmm. not that <clears throat> familiar with the titles and all mm-hmm. like that. Um, like I said, I was always outgoing, you know, so, and mischievous when I was younger, but as I got older and, you know, middle school and all like that, you know, wanted to be popular, you know, date boys or whatnot, um, be able to work, have my own money, so, and I, you know, I got in trouble for curfews a lot for not coming home one time, mm-hmm. so, but you suffer the consequences of not being home one time, so. Yeah. I was able to go to the proms and stuff like that, you know, I always wanted to be in somewhere, you know. Not saying fit in, because I did fit in, but just always wanted to be there where something was going on. So, mm-hmm. But now, as I, you know, as I've grown and gotten older, you know, to go to a party, that's, that's fine. But back in the day, that's just part of growing up and learning, you mm-hmm. know, learning experience. So, mm-hmm. How was, um, did you have any pets back then? Any oh, who? Pets. Yeah, our parents had poodles, toy poodles. Mm-hmm. Nisha and Fifi, two black poodles. Mm-hmm. So we had poodles. Then my brother had a German Shepherd. Um, when I got married, had a kid, had my first child, well, my second child. I had a daycare, I had a rabbit, gerbil, you know, the whole nine yards for kids and whatnot, so, mm-hmm. and a dog, so. And I had a cat, got rid of the cat, because cat was scratched too much. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then finally she was allergic to cats, so we couldn't have a cat, so. Mm-hmm. And I got this dog only because of the fact of, I just want a small dog, but a dog could be housebroken, mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. So what is um, things like with that dog, like Princess? Like, how is it like with Princess? Well, I'm usually at work. Mm-hmm. My fiance doesn't work. He's retired, so him and her at home all day long while they go places. Mm-hmm. You've seen him outside sometimes, mm-hmm. so that's just like his his baby. But he says that's not my dog. But that dog, he's right now at the boat. He's been gone since yesterday, so she misses him. She has a fit. Mm-hmm. And I keep her in a cage when I'm at work because she's beginning to scratch. She scratched my door. She's done gnaw all on them or whatnot. She used to pee on a rug, so I have to keep her in a cage in the daytime when I'm not here. And that she has the freedom of the house. She'll mm-hmm. let you know when she wants to go outside. She'll come back. And you mm-hmm. see her outside. We don't have a cha- gate up or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. So she ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. She's not mm-hmm. going anywhere. How long have you had her? Four years. Four years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How old is she? She's four. She's four? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, can you say who you are again? My name is Diane Nesbitt. Okay, thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Hey.